Hello and welcome to my digital tool of the week presentation on VoiceThread. Um, you may be asking yourself, um, what is VoiceThread? And um, VoiceThread is primarily, first and foremost, a digital presentation tool. So it is a site you go on online and have an account on. Um, and you can upload your presentation. So that might be a PowerPoint presentation, an audio file, a video file. Um, it could be just a static image or document. Um, and you can present that um, to the people you have invited to see your presentation. Um, and that gets to our next feature of VoiceThread, and that is a real collaboration resource. So those people that you can, that you invited to your presentation can participate um, and comment on your presentation, and they can comment on each other's comments. Um, and that really builds a community of collaboration and discussion, um, which is really healthy and uh, a part of a great part of learning, and we like to see that in our libraries. Um, and, and in addition to that, the communication and comment options um, are wonderful. There's a real variety. You can have students uh, participate in the conversation through just like a simple text comment, or it might be a video, or it might be audio. They can upload documents as comments. The options are very customizable um, to what you'd like to see from them. and. Um, that becomes our next question is, can VoiceThread really be used in a school library setting? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, those features, that variety of features, the variety of ways presentations can be done really um, shows um, and highlights um, the differentiation needed in classrooms and um, really uh, gets to the heart of that. So. Um, from the student who, you know, maybe a quiet voice and is kind of drowned out from the back of the classroom, this is where they're really going to be able to shine because they're going to be able to choose um, what comment method works best for them. Um, and you're going to be able to see their work better. Um, a couple other ideas. Uh, you can have students um, collectively um, take notes on a specific um, news article or image, provide commentary on that, and then through the comments, um, you can see how um, students as a whole are understanding, and they're learning from each other in that um, in that environment as well. Um, if you're somebody who's interested in the flipped classroom environment, this is a great tool for you. You can put up a presentation online ahead of time and have students um, comment on it. Um, while they are at home and then address any concerns in the classroom. Um, specifically for a school library setting, you can build um, a series of book talks online and have students respond to um, the individual book talks that you've provided to see if there's one that um, they really like and then engage in a community that way. Maybe there's another student who has already read that book and is encouraging other students in the comments. So that's great too. Um, so those are just a couple ideas of how uh, VoiceThread can be used in a educational and school library setting. Um, next, how does VoiceThread work? We are going to watch a short video um, on the details of um, how VoiceThread looks and how VoiceThread works. So just tune in for a moment. Hello everyone and welcome to this review on the digital tool VoiceThread. Now VoiceThread is primarily a presentation tool, but its real features shine um, as a collaborative tool for those presentations. Um, so we're going to talk about um, today a couple of the affordances and capabilities that VoiceThread has that might be useful in the K-12 classroom as well as in public school libraries. Now as you can see, we are on the home page. That is the home page of VoiceThread once you log into your personal account um, on VoiceThread. So, as you can see, there's only one image right here. Um, this was my practice image, um, or my practice presentation. But if you were someone 
he who, who uses VoiceThread very often, this is the section where you would see a library of all your past created voice threads. Um, so this is where you would find that. They also have the search button up at the top to make it more easy for you to find what you're looking for, especially if you're using it quite often. Um, if you wanted to pay for um, an extended version of VoiceThread, right now I'm only using the free option, which does offer quite a bit of capability, but if you wanted to pay for more accessibility, you could come over here, click the, the arrows on the left-hand side of the page, and you can see that it also allows you to add groups and courses um, to your account so that particular people, particular groups, particular courses would be able to view your presentations. Um, so that's something you could think about um, as you are going ahead and um, considering using that in your own practice. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So as you can see right now, it, we just have the one presentation, but we're going to go ahead and view that because I want you to see what your students see when they would go in and take a look at a presentation you had. So I just go went ahead and I put up at the top of the page um, just an image of a book cover. Um, you could put several um, different types of items there, but we will do that in a moment. Um, but this is what your students see. Um, up at the, the, the bottom of the page, rather, you can see comments. So if I click that, it expands and it gives your students a variety of ways to respond and gives them a, a accessibility feature um, to speak and collaborate, to communicate with their peers and with you in a way that is most comfortable for them. So let's a look at those options so you can certainly do a text option um, this one is probably more for a corporate setting but this one allows you to make a comment using your phone um, but we have just an audio comment here we have a video comment and then also right down here you can upload a comment um, so students can pick whichever of these is most convenient for them um, if you gave them that flexibility so I already went ahead and commented on this. Um, as you can see over here on the left-hand side of the page, the square with my initials in it. And I just went ahead and typed below. Um, I could certainly go back and um, edit my past, um, my past comments. But this is what you see on the side of the page. So every time a student responds um, to the presentation, to another comment, you're going to see the actual work they're doing on this left-hand side build up. So you'd be able to review it. They'd be able to review um, comments and um, from each other and collaborate with each other in that comment section in a way that's a little bit more personalized. So this is what your students see as you create a presentation. Now let's go back and see how we would go about even creating a presentation. So, I just clicked out of the X, you can go back up to the top and click Create. Very simple, just click Add Media. Now you've got your choices of how you would like your presentation to look. You can upload something from your computer, maybe you have it on um, a PowerPoint slide, and you'd like to upload it that way, you can certainly do that. Um, also, you could do media sources, so if there's a, a historical document that you want to upload, um, you can certainly do that. They do have a couple options here for you. Khan Academy, Flickr, Google Drive, even in your public library, all are media sources that are available for you um, to use to start um, presentations and collaborative projects. Also, you can do audio recordings, webcam, video, and photo, as well as a URL. So, just for the sake um, of ease, I'm just going to click URL. I have already selected one, so we're just going to click that, get that in there, and click Save. And it's really just as simple as that. You can click in a title here, so I'm going to type in Practice 2. You can certainly enter in a description and tag if you want, um, add in playback options, um, 
and even restrict the uh, comment methods. Um, if you really want to hear students' voices, you maybe you want to take away um, text or file uh, methods. Um, or if you do not want to um, have them put online videos of themselves, maybe you want to take away the webcam option. Um, so it's really customizable for you as well. Um, also, we have cover art here. If you find, well, right now we're just going to label it Practice 2. Maybe you can click Save. And it's as simple as that. You can certainly add more slides, more media here if you want. Just keep clicking that plus button as it shows up. For the moment, we can just leave it right there. Um, we can go over to Comment. Right, and see, this is what we're seeing what we originally saw on the page and we can even go ahead and click share so if you want to go click share this is how we would share it with our students so you would create this ahead of time and then potentially send this in an email in a hyperlink um, or even embed it in a um, an online course um, that you have for your library or for your um, individual class. So you can certainly embed that wherever you would like. Okay. So right now we're going to go back. This, this is basically how you do presentations, but I want to also show you that, um, that VoiceThread has other options for you as well. Um, they do have a um, predetermined library of possible options that you can look through um, as well. So if you just click on that Browse All button at the top of the page, um, you can click through and see what other people have already created. Um, so you can already see they have an option for K-12 for higher education, art, travel, business, what have you. Um, for the moment, we're just going to click K-12. They have all these options for you to look through. So maybe you don't even need to already um, create a brand new voice. Or maybe there's something out there that already exists that would work for your personal use. Um, so, for example, we're going to go into science. We're going to do science K8. So all these options were things that have already been created. Maybe this is something that you would like to use. And this is free for your use through your account on VoiceThread. Okay? So that's a brief overview of VoiceThread and what it can do for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Hope you enjoy.